What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. For today's video, we're going to be checking out the Transformers Legacy United Voyager class Origin Wheeljack. The very first Transformer to ever be seen on screen way back in 1984. So what a release to celebrate the whopping 40th anniversary and also arguably one of the more ambitious Cybertronian designs due to despite what vehicle mode he would have, the robot mode would always stay the same. So I imagine that caused for some big headaches when it came around to designing him. But to be honest, I think for the most part, they've done a pretty bang on job and I'm going to go ahead and spoil it for you guys but I am in love with this wheel jack. I think he is looking excellent. So when it comes to detail, you know, easily recognizable as the original G1 design, especially from the front. This guy is looking sharp when it comes to sculpt and because he is a slightly smaller Voyager, has literally been filled in front side to back, which we love to see, especially for the price point. Now as we spin this guy around here to the back, unfortunately guys, we may have just seen our TMNT crossover reveal because wheel jack is packing one shell of a backpack. I mean, that thing is mighty. There really is no beating around the bush, especially from this angle. Unfortunately, he is kind of kibbletastic, but in his defense, as I mentioned beforehand, there was never a robot mode design of this guy, which integrated those Cybertronian components. So to kind of keep accuracy from the front, they've pretty much sent all of those Cybertronian pieces to the back. And yeah, I won't lie, this isn't the greatest, but in its defense, I can't say this is a deal breaker. You know, to be honest, I am loving this figure. Definitely one of the best G1 universe figures I think they've brought out in a long time. The amount of fan service they were able to cram into this guy, especially when it comes around to that Cybertronian vehicle mode, is just on point. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this was a super ambitious design. So to see that they even approached it, I think is definitely commendable. Now, as we check out his accessories, Jackie is packing the iconic over-the-shoulder cannon, which along with the head sculpt, I think has to be one of the sharpest sculpts we've seen in a long time. And a great throwback to the actual More Than Meets the Eye episode would be the inclusion of these Dominator discs. Now, these have been really nicely detailed and painted. They can also be attached onto his elbow. So maybe if Will Jack wants to mince the face of a Decepticon, he can give them one nasty elbow to the face. Or you can kind of Evo fusion these to his blaster so that he can begin immobilizing the Decepticons. And then finally, a really deep dive would be the blast shield. Now, we do see this in the episode, although for this form, for robot mode, this can also double as a jetpack. Although I won't lie to you guys, I already think that backpack is big enough. So the second you kind of slap this on, it really does just begin to add more insult than injury. So this is definitely an accessory, which I think you should save for the vehicle mode. Although, I did think it was kind of cool that despite this guy being a slightly smaller Voyager, he is totally able to pack all of his accessories onto him at one time. So, in addition to the over-the-shoulder cannon, as we spin this guy around here to the back, the Dominator discs do store here, and then the jetpack literally just slides over. So, I imagine maybe he could use this to make the multiversal leap over to the Legacy Universe. And to check out what possibility Jackie is packing, despite this guy definitely being a chunky monkey, he is packing a punch. So to begin with, the head is on a ball joint. This will look up, it will look down. It can also rotate left to right. The same can also be said here for the shoulders. They will even kick out to the side. There is a bicep swivel, an elbow bend, and in addition to that, even a wrist swivel, which I thought was pretty cool. The waist can rotate all the way around with no problems at all, which I thought was sick. When it comes here to the hips, these will kick forwards roughly to that far. Despite the giant ass backpack, they they can even kick backwards to a pretty decent range. They will then kick out to the side. So maybe if this guy wants to send one of those Decepticon Seekers flying through that multiversal portal, then he should have no issues at all. There is even a really neat thigh cut, a 90 degree bend here in the knee. And then finally, as we check out the ankles, in addition to rocking forwards and rocking backwards, they can tilt side to side and also rotate all the way around with no issues. So definitely a really well articulated figure, despite being on the slightly chunkier side. Although one thing you are definitely going to want to watch out out for would be the backpack. Now because of its enormous size, unfortunately it can get very easily misplaced, so it's pretty much held in via this tab and two slots on the back wings. Now if you accidentally bump it here in the base, sadly this thing is literally going to fly clean off. And I'm going to be real guys, that's not the best because of its scale. I really would have loved for them to have maybe added an additional locking mechanism somewhere around this region, but then maybe it would have obstructed the waist joint. So I guess you win some and you lose some. But as you guys all know, to see what Will Jack is truly capable of. Now let's put this guy through the pose test. So 
So, checking out some comparisons, this is really where the fun begins, especially when it comes to kind of causing a discussion. So, on the right hand side, we have the Earthrise Wheeljack. Now, I can't sugarcoat it guys, this is easily the most accurate version of this guy, at least when it comes down to robot mode. This design was intended to transform into the Earth based vehicle, so when it comes to the backpack, it is so damn clean. But, with that being said, I still think this one does a pretty decent job despite being a little kibbletastic, and one thing I thought was crazy from an engineering perspective, is that the two vehicle modes literally couldn't be any further apart in terms of design, yet they have managed to compress a Voyager scale vehicle into a deluxe scale robot. You know, when it comes to size, these two are pretty much bang on to each other. So I thought that was seriously impressive. Next up, we have the super cool Origins Jazz, which when it comes to kind of integrating that alien alt mode into a robot mode, I think he probably does it the best out of the three, although he does kind of have an advantage on his side, and that would be that his alt mode is considerably smaller in the show in comparison to Wheeljack. So, once again, that mass has to go somewhere, and in the case of Wheeljack, unfortunately, that is on the back. But, in terms of a display, you know, these two, especially from the front, are looking pretty damn sharp. And to kind of round off the trio, we have Wheeljack's work friend. Work friends? You've been inside me. The Origins Bumblebee, the very first figure to kind of be introduced into this subline, and scale-wise, you know, pretty much spot on to the animation, despite this guy later on being able to store inside this guy's vehicle mode. Here, for some general size comparisons, we have the Studio Series 86 Earth Mode Hound, the Voyager Class 86 movie Ironhide, and then finally, we have the absolute goat, the Earthrise Optimus Prime. So, scale-wise, again, appears to be pretty spot on to the original G1 animation. But with all that said and done, now we have to turn to what is easily the main event when it comes to this figure, the transformation, which I'm just going to brace you guys for because wow, I haven't been this surprised by a conversion in a very long time. So for the first step, take a hold of the waist joint and spin this bad boy all the way around until the back is now facing the front. You will then pretty much do the same here with the head sculpt. So swing this here all of the way around. Then what we can do is grab a hold of the chest unit, detach this away from its original configuration, begin to slide this down. Now, there is a little slot there that this neck tab is going to very nicely slide into, so just snap that section there into place. If it hasn't done so already, spin around here to the back, take a hold of the backpack and detach it and shift this piece here down. Now that's complete, what we can then do is take a hold of these wings, slide these here all the way inside and do exactly the same here for this side. Now for the next step, this is where things begin to get really interesting because you are going to want to kick the shoulder out to the side, rotate here all the way around, then what you'll do is take a hold of this panel, slide this section down, and then grab a hold of the fist. Now rotate this around until the smooth piece is now facing forwards. We will then slide this here all the way inside this hollow cavity. Then you are going to want to rotate at the bicep, and this tab is going to slide into this notch. So bring this section here down until it does snap into place, and pretty much do the same for this side. So angle the shoulder outwards, rotate this bad boy here around, deploy this forearm panel, then we can take a hold of the wrist and swivel this here around, slide this all the way inside this hollow cavity exactly like that then what you'll do is rotate at that bicep and again bring that elbow backwards until that little tab does slide into that notch now we can begin to combine these sections here directly down the middle so these little teeth are pretty much going to interlock into one another they will then slide over the back of the robot mode head then what we can do is come around here to the back take a hold of what will become the spoiler detach this away from the windshield and you are pretty much going to want to angle these shoulders in a way so that this tab perfectly slides into this slot. So pretty much just line that up exactly like this. Now we can turn here to the legs, which are straight up mental. So for the first step, you are going to want to take a hold of this knee joint and break Wheeljack's leg outwards like this. I thought that was a really cool piece of engineering. So do the same here for this side. Literally snap that knee joint outwards so that right now he is coming across to be one monstrosity. Then for the next step, we can flip here to the feet. Now you are going to want to rotate these until yet again the front is now facing the back. So do the same here for this side. Then what you'll do is take a hold of this panel, detach it like this, and then slide this section here down. Now, once you've done that, what you will then do is literally take this panel and slide it here all the way forwards. Now, check out that compression. That is nuts. You'll then want to do pretty much the same here with this panel. So bring this here out to the side, grab a hold of the green windshield, and then slide this section here down. Now, in all honesty, I do prefer to kind of leave these like that for now. So we will just jump over here to this side. So again, bring that panel there out. 
out. What you'll then do is completely straighten this section here out, flip this bad boy here upwards, take a hold of this section, swing this here around, grab a hold of that windshield and deploy it all of the way down. Now for the next step, we are going to come into these panels. So these are going to slide outwards on both sides exactly like that. Now what you'll do is take the feet and these are going to slide into these hollow cavities. So they will just soft rest into place. So do the same here for this side, slide that bad boy all the way inside. Then what you'll do is pretty much flip him here to the side. So what's going to happen here is we are going to flip this panel forwards and there are a variety of tabs here which are going to slide into to those slots so pretty much just line those bad boys up like that once that's complete we can then take this panel and flip this here all the way up and over and these little notches are pretty much going to rest in between that white tab so the right now one side should look perfect spin around here to this side and do exactly the same so make sure that's straightened out again line all of those tabs and slots up with each other so just shoot that underneath that windshield then we can take this component and flip this bad boy here all the way up like this then we are going to spin around here to the back of wheel jack so for this step you are going to take this panel flip this here forwards and on the underside is yet another panel so this will slide outwards do the same here for this side flip this here forwards slide this panel here outwards and then what you'll do is pretty much combine these bad boys directly down the middle now once that's complete we can then shift this here up make sure that everything is kind of cube like in its design so there aren't too many gaps and then what you'll do is pretty much take the roof begin sliding this down and you must first of all make sure that these green transparent pieces tab into the roof to begin with so just line that up on this side come around here to this side make sure that that is also the same and now is where you can begin kind of lining up the entire rear of the vehicle so just shoot those tabs and slots into place like that then we will spin here to the underside grab a hold of that fake earth mode windshield slide this backwards and it is going to tab into these little circular notches so just snap that into place so, sliding into battle is Wheeljack, now fully transformed into his Cybertronian hovercraft. Now, this is where the money shot is at. You know, when it comes to detail, pretty much spot on to how it did very briefly show up in that first G1 episode. The details are crazy. You know, this guy has been filled in front side to back, which I think is really impressive. Even the back is accurate to the actual animation model. So, we get the doors, which would kind of drop down in the show for Bumblebee to slide into. And I'm also really digging how they are finally using clip plastic inserts for the windshield so that has pretty much minimized any color mismatch which i think is looking dope i'm also really liking the front ends of the vehicle you know the undercarriage kibble has for the most part been kept to the bare minimum and as i alluded to previously this guy is more than meets the eye because when it comes to easter eggs he is stacked so, first up, we see the return of the Dominator Discs, which he did deploy in the animation, mainly to escape the Ring of Fire, which was set upon him by the Seekers. So, I thought that was a really cool weapon. Although, to take that one step further, now is where you can whack out the Shield Deflector. So, this does slide right over the top of the windshield to protect him from enemy firepower, which I thought was so freaking cool. And if you happen to own the Origin Bumblebee, then the Energy Conductors, aka the Energon Rods, can be attached onto the spoiler, or if you wanted to go for full-blown animation accuracy, they can even be stored on the inside, which I thought was really cool, although this isn't the only compatibility to be had with Bumblebee. Because as he flies in for a landing, you can also store him inside Wheeljack. So to begin with, to kind of prep him for that, you are going to want to take these side panels, flip these bad boys here upwards, and then compress this section here against the back. Do the same here for this side. So angle this here upwards, and then flip this here all the way to the back. For the next step, you are then going to want to pop open the roof of Wheeljack to reveal a hollowed out interior, which again, from a design perspective, I thought was awesome. We can then deploy the ramp, much like in the animation. And just like that, Bumblebee has been damaged by one of the Decepticon Seekers, and he now slides into Wheeljack for refuge. So, that is pretty sick. I mean, the way B seamlessly integrates into the design is awesome. You can then even take the ramp, close this bad boy here back up. You can then take the roof, and this will literally lip right back over the top. And as we spin this around to the front, you can even see B beneath the windshield. So, the fact that we are now seeing an Origin Wheeljack, and that he can contain Bumblebee within, I think is just wicked from a design perspective you know Hasbro right now are killing it when it comes to some of these Legacy United figures and as I mentioned right at the very beginning of the video what incredible fan service this figure is packing 
So, to round this video off, now let's check out some vehicle mode comparisons. So, on the right hand side, we have the Transformers Earthrise Wheeljack. Now, whilst in robot mode, these guys were pretty much eye to eye with each other, but as you guys can see, there is now a big difference. So, I've said it once, I've said it twice, and I'll say it again. When it comes to engineering, Origin Wheeljack is mind blowing. Here is how he sizes up alongside the Origins Jazz. Now, I was a big fan of the Transformers Siege line, but after checking out some of these Origin Cybertronian figures, I'm thinking maybe Hasbro could have gone slightly harder when it came round to that Cybertronian aesthetic, because there is no denying that some of these Origin characters are super alien when it does come to their alt mode. So, if they ever do approach Transformers Siege again, seriously, I would love to see full-blown spaceships, much like we're seeing from these two figures. And talking of a full-blown spaceship, here we have Origin Bumblebee, which is basically a flying saucer and when it comes to scale you know spot on to the actual animation so again really impressive from a design perspective for some general size comparisons we are once again whacking out the transformers earthrise slash studio series hound so a pretty decent deluxe to voyager ratio we then have the Studio Series 86 Voyager Class Ironhide, and I think this is really where you see the Voyager title come out to play when it comes to Wheeljack, because once again, Wheeljack was slightly smaller in comparison to Ironhide in robot mode, but that is not the case whatsoever here for vehicle mode. And finally, here he is alongside the absolute GOAT, we have the leader of the Autobots, Optimus Prime, and with the release of Wheeljack, we've now pretty much concluded the three Autobot Cybertronian vehicles, and so far, I have been loving these releases, so with the concept art series now being a thing, I would really like to see Hasbro kind of expand upon this idea and maybe approach a G1 Cybertronian Optimus Prime because we know Prime was on Cybertron at the same time as Will Jack and Jazz and Bumblebee. I think it would be really cool to kind of see Hasbro's take on a Cybertronian Optimus Prime, but at least when it comes to scale, these guys are looking great. So guys, wrapping up on this review for the Transformers, Legacy United, Origin, Wheeljack. What an incredible entry into the lineup. You know, when it comes around to vehicle mode especially, I think they have well and truly knocked it out of the park. They have literally packed this guy with all of the bells and whistles which we did see in the animation, even down to the integration of Bumblebee being able to store inside, which I won't lie to you, I think is an absolute geek out moment. The engineering, the transformation is something which really has to be admired. You know, as I've mentioned, I think it is easily one of the most impressive Voyager scale conversions that I have seen in a long time. You know, to think that this big chunky van literally transforms into a deluxe scale robot is so incredibly cool. Unfortunately, the robot mode is a little kibbutastic, but as I mentioned, I really don't find it, at least for myself, to be a deal breaker. This guy can easily pull off all of the poses that a slightly more streamlined figure could, and when it comes to detail, he's definitely packing a punch. I'm also a big fan of the accessories, especially that awesome looking blast shield, and if you have already picked up the previous two origin figures, then you need to try down Origin Wheeljack because I think he's by far the best out of the bunch. I would love to get your thoughts on this guy down in the comment section below. What do you guys think? I want to thank you all so much for watching and until my next review, transform and roll out!